What's going on YouTube? This is What Would Josh Do? And this is a video of a product that I purchased on Amazon. I've been making Inker battery pack videos for almost a decade now. And uh, the power bank, battery bank, whatever you want to call it, uh, they do really well. And people really like them and have a lot of questions. And they purchase them on Amazon and they want to find more information. So that's why I make these videos. I make them to help you decide whether this is the right battery for you and also how to use said battery in you know the most efficient way. So this is the Anchor Series 5 PowerCore Essential PD20K. So I actually never made a video of the PowerCore Essential PD, but in a lot of videos you'll see that it was my main battery. I brought this thing with me to work every day and I used it to charge up my phone. And because it was 18 watts output and 20,000 mAh, meaning I could get a few charges out of this one battery that's full with my phone. I bought this thing January of 2020. So that's how long ago I bought this thing. The old one took six, uh, almost seven hours to recharge. And it came out in the year 2019, June 2019. Now the new one, it's going to be a 20 watt versus 18 watt. That's the biggest difference, really the only difference. Still takes just as long because the input hasn't changed, only the output. And this one came out October of 2020. So a year later, a little over a year later. This is the A1287. All right, so in the box, we have another box and we have instructions and we have the power bank and we have some cables and a case. So there's the case. Nice, they give you two cables. So if you press the little button on the battery, it shows you that there's up to four bars. If you see the fourth one, you have 100%. If you see the third one, you have 50%. If you see the second one, you have 25%. Anyways, it goes in from there. Basically, the more lights you have, the more battery you have remaining. You can enter a trickle charging mode to charge up earphones or earbuds or you know, like Apple AirPods or uh, Google Pixel Buds or Samsung earbuds. Uh, and then, so you double press it and it turns green. Press it once, you exit that mode, and then you charge it using a USB-C cable and a power delivery charger. We're going to show all that. The total output is five volts, three amps. The USB-A output can do up to 12 volts, 1.5 amps. And the USB-C output can do nine volts at 2.2 amps which is the difference. The old one could only do nine volts at two amps. So you're gaining the 0.22 amps, which gives you the 20 watts of power uh, to charge up something. But you're still only gonna do uh, 15 volts at 1.2 amps for charging, or nine volts at two amps, or three volts at three amps to get 18 watts. All right, so they give you a little carrying bag. They give you a USB-A to USB-C cable and they give you a USB-C to USB-C. Now in the future, iPhones will actually have to start including a USB-C port because some countries have a new law that went into effect or will go into effect soon where they can't sell a device unless it has that you know, charging port. So soon enough, this USB-C to USB-C should be able to charge your iPhone 15 uh, when that comes out. Unless Apple just totally does away with the charging port, which is something that very well could happen. So here's the battery bank, looks very nice, has a great texture to it, feels really good. It looks really nice, press this, you've got two of them, so you've got half the battery remaining. If it was at four, you'd be full, if it's at one, you're almost dead. On the bottom there, you can see all the stats and specifications, go ahead and pause that and read it. PowerCore Essential PD 20K A1287, nine volts at 2.2 amps. It's a pretty impressive little battery. We get the USB-C, the USB-A to C, and the charger, and a little carrying case. The carrying case is cool because you can put it inside here and then close this up and now your battery is protected. I did a video on these things years ago. I have not had them in a case. They're about five to six years old and you can see that they've definitely had some wear and tear over the years. But you could also take those cables and stick them in here, and now you're not gonna lose your cables and your battery pack is protected from you know getting damaged. So that's pretty cool that they include that. Now, comparing it to the old 20K, 
you can't immediately notice a difference except for the fact that this one I purchased in January of 2020. So literally, you know, it's December 25th, 2022 right now as I'm filming this. So we're literally days away from hitting the three-year mark with this battery. Three years that I've had it in my possession that I've used it on a daily basis up until recently. I did purchase the Inker 535 because this does uh, the same thing, 20,000 mAh, except you get 30 watts of Type-C output versus the 18 watts that I was getting with the old one. So that was a pretty big jump. Now, 20 watts to 30 watts, that's still a pretty big jump, you know, obviously. And then you get the two Type-C ports. The reason you would want the 535 is you can do 15 watts and 15 watts. With this one, you only have one port for Type-C, so it's just 20 watts. Obviously, you can still use the USB-A port, but you can on this one as well. Other than that, they are very identical. Can't really see a difference. Obviously, you know, this one has not been in a bag, and you can not even make out that text very well, if at all. All right, so our Z Fold 4 is almost dead. All right, so I have a scale here. Uh, we're going to see how much this battery weighs. 354 grams with the brand new one. Now the old one. Wow, okay, so the old one weighed a little bit less at 344. Nothing, you know, you wouldn't notice a difference. I didn't notice that by comparing the two with my hand, but 354 versus 344. So obviously... The advantage being the two extra watts of output power that you get with this. Because if you were to use the USB-C port, you would get 18 watts with the old one. If you use the A and the C, well, now you're splitting that power up. And 18 watts divided by 2 is less than 20 watts divided by 2. I'm a nerd here on this channel, so I like to have things that measure how fast something is going. So I have this little guy. I'm going to plug it into the USB-C port. And then I'm going to plug it into my Z Fold 4. And on Android, you can download this app from the Google Play Store called Ampere, which tells you how efficiently you're charging a device if you don't have uh, the tools that I have to measure. So we can see that that's going at almost 3,000, which is a pretty decent speed. That's not bad at all. If we look on here, we can see that we're going at 9 volts at 1.6 amps. So it's about 15 watts of power. So that's not bad at all. That's not the 20 that we should be getting but it is what it is. Now I like to carry these short little one foot cables that Anchor sells, and I'm just checking to see if there's a difference. I like it because in my pocket, you know, I, it's less things in my pocket because it's so short. But yeah, so we're still getting about 14.7 watts, and that's showing almost 3,000. You'll want to use the USB-C port whenever possible. So if you use the A to C, you're gonna see the difference that it makes so we got the fast charging icon and we can see that we're doing nine volts at 1.6 amps, which is almost 15 watts. That's actually very impressive. And that is because Samsung uses a different type of charging than like a Google Pixel does, which I have one and I'll demonstrate that next to me. So this can do fast charging over USB-A to USB-C. And as you can tell, there's no loss really, which is kind of crazy. I know that this can do super fast charging at 25 watts but you're definitely not going to get that with the USB A to C and USB C to C did not give us that either and what I mean by that is this is the official Samsung super fast charger and if I plug it in see now that I have two little icons there and this is going at 24 watts right now so this is uh Anchor does have some things that can do the PPS uh, protocol, but as you can see, that is um, that's very nice. That is, that is very nice. Now, if you have a Google Pixel device, such as my Pixel 7 Pro here, with this new charger, and keep in mind, as your battery is you know lower, it's going to charge faster, and as it's full, it's going to charge slower. So... You can see here that we're going at 19 watts, almost 20 watts. And that's showing 3,700, which is almost 38. That's very freaking nice. Like, to put that into perspective, so we're getting almost, we're getting right at 38. 
It's going at 19 and a half watts. If we connect it to my old one, which remember, this was my main battery for nearly three years. I used this thing all the time. We're getting 17.3 watts at about 3,400. So that's not bad, but now that I have the new one, there's no reason to use this one anymore. Now, while there wasn't really a change with the Z Fold 4 because it uses a different type of charging technology than the Pixel, if I were to use that USB-A port that came with the charger and try to charge up my Pixel, this is definitely one of those situations where you want to use USB-C to see whenever possible, even when it comes to the uh, Z Fold 4. So look at that, 1300, a big, big difference. We're now only doing five volts at one and a half amp. So we're getting about almost seven and a half watts. So much, much slower. So you'll definitely want to use C2C on a Google Pixel device or something that uses power delivery for charging. Now, the cool thing about having two ports here is since we know Samsung can still do fast charging over USB-A, you can see that we're fast charging and we're going at the 14 watts. And with that USB-C cable, plug it into our other tester. And as you can see, this one's going at seven watts. This one's going at eight watts. This one's USB-A, this one's USB-C. So it's A to C, C to C. And there you go. So you can charge two things at one time. That's perfectly fine. Just know that you're going to, of course, slow down the charging. If you're watching this in the future and Apple finally switches over to USB-C and you have a older Apple device, such as I do right now, you'll want to use a USB-C to lightning. This cable I bought on Amazon. They also have a black one. So we'll plug this in. We'll plug this into our new charger and then we'll plug it into our iPhone and it currently shows that it is charging. And if you look here, it's currently going at nine volts, 1.8, so 16 watts, 17. This phone can receive 20 watts. In the video I just did on this PowerCore 10K Slim, we also got 20 watts, so this should do it. There is a variable where if your phone is charged to a certain point, it is not going to go full throttle it's going to start slowing down that charge as you get, you know, to like say 50% battery. It's not going to charge as fast as it was when your phone was at 20% battery. And then when you're at, you know, 80% battery, you're going to barely put anything into your phone at all. So right now we're going at about 18 and a half watts because our battery is getting, you know, more full. And our tablet, which is at 14% battery, now it's currently fast charging. So if you have an iPhone that uses the lightning port, you'll definitely want to pick up one of these. Again, I'll have a link to this in the description below. If I forget, yell at me in the comments and I'll update the description. To get it into that trickle charging mode for like small devices like game controllers or earbuds or something. So you're going to double press that to turn it green. And that's how you get into the trickle charging, the very slow charging speed for such something such as a game controller or, you know, earbuds. And then you'll press it to exit to go back to normal full 20 watts of speed. And a question I get a lot is, Josh, how do I charge this guy? So you'll want to use the included USB-C to C cable, and you'll want to purchase something like this Anchor Nano 3 30 watt adapter. Because right now, in 2022, they're about $22. And a lot of times you can get them for just $18 on Amazon.com. I'll have a link to this in the description as well. You're going to plug in this uh, port here. And just to get a visual idea of how efficiently we're charging, I've got this watt meter and I'm going to plug this into the battery and we can see that that second light's flashing, which would indicate that this battery is fairly low. At least it's not the first one that's flashing. That would mean it's really dead. And we're going at about 18 watts of charging speed, which is to be expected. Unfortunately, the 20 watt output is not also a 20 watt input. So using this combination here, your battery should charge up in just a few hours. And for demonstration purposes, this is that USB-C to lightning cable that we bought for our battery bank and to charge up our iPhone. And we are currently charging it over 20 watts. Well, okay, so right at 20. Obviously, if you have a newer iPhone, such as the, like the 14, you can charge at almost 30. I have a 12, so it is a little bit older at this point. Now, biggest difference between these two is this is the new 20 watt 10k slim 
and this is the new PowerCore Essential uh, 20 watt. There's not much of a size difference. There's definitely a weight difference. And uh, this one giving you twice the capacity of this guy. But this guy being so light. I mean, we're talking 354 grams versus 260. So that's like 100 grams difference. Hopefully this video helped you out and was educational. And I went over every question you might have had. Uh, you cannot do pass-through charging. So since this is currently charging and this light's flashing, you cannot use that USB-A port. It is disabled while this is charging. I'm super excited because now I can lay this old 18 watt to rest. And honestly, what will probably end up happening is a family member will be on a road trip or something and I gift them this battery. It has done me very well, but with it only being 18 watts, I would much rather charge my phone at 20 watts. So now this battery will one day be in a friend or family member's hands and hopefully give them several more years of, uh, you know, charging their phone. I mean, my oldest Anchor battery packs are still doing very well. This is a little 5000, uses the micro USB input, and these are PowerCore 2 10Ks, and they use the uh, quick charge, uh, but it's micro USB. Uh, I could do 18 watts, which is pretty cool. And these little guys are what I stick in like my daughter's backpack. <laughs> and this is also a really cool one. Uh, so I bought three of these. My daughter lost one. And then her second one, I had two of them in her backpack. So when one died, she could use the other. And I would charge both of them. Uh, she had it on her desk at school. Went to recess or lunch or something. I don't know. I don't remember what happened. But then she came back and it was gone. Somebody stole it. So <laughs> this is the last remaining one but it has a built-in lightning cable and you charge it with a lightning cable so this is a really cool charger but it's only five thousand it's really only gonna take a dead phone and you know put life into it basically it's not gonna fully charge it unless it's an older smaller iphone that's the beautiful thing about you know 10k 10k is enough to charge your phone depending on how big it is you know, anywhere from one to one and a half times, well, completely full, uh, more than likely one and a half, because that's what I get out of my iPhone 12 Pro Max here with a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. I get about, I get one and a half charges, but with a 20K, you're going to get like, you know, three charges, almost four charges. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If I answered any of your questions and this video helped you out, definitely please leave a rating below. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's at What Would Josh Do, same as my YouTube channel. Please subscribe if you're new to the channel. This is What Would Josh Do, and I'm out.